Hey there, welcome to this lesson. We're going to get practice implementing the quick sort algorithm in Java in this lesson. And your assignment will be to write the code for quick sort. And you really just have to copy, for the most part, copy the pseudocode from the previous lesson with a little bit of quirks uh, here and there. But this should be an easier algorithm for you to implement compared with uh, merge sort. I think a lot of students uh, have difficulty implementing merge sort and uh, quick sort is a little easier to, to, to complete. So this is the input array in the main method of the app class. You should have this code already in the algo.quicksort package. And in the, the main uh, method, we are basically creating an array here of randomly placed values, okay? These are not sorted. And then we apply the quick sort algorithm on the input array. And uh, this is support, supposed to sort it. What are the arguments for this? The array is the first argument, and then the starting position, starting slot, uh, and then the ending slot position. That's the given range, P and R. So here the last slot is going to be the length of the array minus 1. And uh, this should run and uh, print out the results uh, in a sorted fashion. So let me hit play here and notice that it's uh, printing out the results uh, in a sorted fashion. So where's the code? The code is down here. I don't want to scroll all the way down because guess what? You're going to be completing that, okay? And I'm basically going to start fresh. I'm going to be deleting the body of this method and, and coding it in front of you uh, step by step and explaining you the process. So, uh, But first, I want you to work on it on your own. Implement quick sort. Remember, it has uh, two major pieces. The first piece is the partition step, which is uh, going to figure out the partition point, right? The pivot. Um, and then after that, we need the left and rights uh, of, of, of this invocation, quick sort. So you're going to be doing that very similar to the pseudocode. So refer to that if you forgot how that looks. If you've downloaded the source code, you probably already have the code for quick sort and the partition, but I encourage you to delete that. Okay, if you see my code, delete it and try it fresh on your own. Don't worry, I'm going to go over the solution uh, in a little bit. So you can go ahead, pause the video now, and uh, resume when you're ready to see my solution. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you took the time to complete this assignment on your own. You had to complete the quick sort method as well as the partition method. So if you were, if you saw any of my code, hopefully you deleted it and worked it out on your own and didn't see my solution beforehand. So now I'm going to basically code up the entire solution in front of you step by step. So here it is. The first thing we need in the quick sort method is the if statement. And this is going to be very similar to the pseudocode in the previous lesson. So you can literally pretty much copy that almost line by line. So in this if statement, we're going to check for whether the start position is smaller than end. Okay. And what this means is, as long as the starting position of the given range, uh, as long as that doesn't exceed end, then that means we still have work to do. We're still traversing the array. So in that case, um, what we're going to do is, well, there are two things. One is getting the partition point, the index position of the correctly placed pivot value in the array. And then the other thing is uh, invoking quicksort on the, for the left side as well as the right side. So let's get the partition point out of the way. We're going to do, uh, I'm going to call it PP for partition point. And we're going to get that from invoking partition and passing in the input array as well as the start and the ending slots. All right, these are the index positions of the start and end. And this method has yet to be defined. I just stubbed it out with a return returning a zero just so this compiles, but you're gonna we're gonna be filling this out in a second. So we get the partition point and now we can use this point to uh, sort the left and the right halves. So we invoke quick sort passing in the input array and the starting slot for this given range and the ending slot is going to be pp minus 1. So the partition point minus 1, what does that mean? Well, that's that's one less, that's one less than the correctly placed pivot value. So we are not considering that index position, we're considering one less than that, and that's going to give us the left side, okay, from start up to the partition point minus 1, okay? So I'm just going to write some notes here. Uh, sorts the left half of the range. 
And then we're going to do the same thing for the right. So quick sort, input array. And the starting position for this side, however, is going to be the right. Right, so it's going to be pp plus 1. We're dealing with the right half, so the starting position is 1 more than the partition point. The end is the last slot. Okay, so this, this sorts the right half of the given range. Okay. And that's it. This is the body of this quick sort method, which is being invoked here. Now the heart of the algorithm, right? The heart of the algorithm is this guy right here. This partition method, which we're going to define. Let me just add some more notes for you to be able to review later. Uh, what does the partition method do for us? Well, it gives us the index position of the correctly placed pivot value. So this is the index position of the number correctly placed in the array. That's what partition does for us. And how does it do this? We're going to fill out that method body right now. So the first thing we need in here is the pivot. Okay, what is the pivot value? We're going to get that from the end of the array. And we can get it like that. The last slot of the given range, we're going to consider that the data in that slot to be the pivot value. And now we can do some comparison with this. Uh, we just need another variable. We need a variable called i, which we're going to be using to increment and uh, traverse the array. And this begins at the start minus 1 index position. Okay. So in the first iteration, i starts from negative 1. And then we're going to be incrementing i as we go along. So next, what we're going to need now is the for loop. And we can use another variable here. And this is going to be uh, the start. j is going to begin at the starting index position. And as long as j, as long as j is less than or equal to the end minus 1 index position, we're going to continue to increment j. And in this loop, the first line is the actual comparison. The comparison at the input array at the at the jth index position. If that is less than or equal to the pivot value, then we're going to be first incrementing i, okay, and then we're going to be swapping. We're going to be swapping uh, what i is with what j is in the input array. So let's first get those values. I'm going to call it i val. We're going to get that from the input array at the ith index position. And then we're going to get the uh, value for j at the jth index position. So we get these values, and now we can put them into the correct spots. We're basically swapping here. So in the input array at the ith index position, we're actually going to be putting the jval. And at the input array at the jth index position, we're going to be putting the ival. All right, it's as simple as that. This is, this is where we are are swapping, okay, swapping below. And you can have your own method that swaps two values in, in an array, or you could do what I'm doing here. So once we exit this loop, what does this mean? When we exit this loop, we're done bringing over all the values that are smaller than the pivot over to the left side. So in that case, let me put some comments here. Put the pivot value in the correct slot next. All right, this is what we have to do. We need to, once we're done bringing everything over to the left side, we need to put the pivot, the value that we consider to be the pivot, we need to put that in the correct slot and then return which slot uh, that pivot was placed in. So let's do just that. Um, we're going to initialize another variable. I'll call it iVal again. And this is the value that uh, resides in the input array at the i plus 1 index position. Okay, so we take that and then we place this value in the ending slot. Okay, we already have the pivot. We already have extracted the pivot in the first step. So now I'm going to put the pivot in the input array at the i plus 1 index position, right? This is the correct index position of where uh, pivot should be. Okay, so here, pivot value is placed in the correct 
slot of the array. And now all we have to do is return the index position for the correctly placed pivot value, like that. And that's it. That's our algorithm. So hopefully you were able to complete this, and with any luck, I think we should, we should be fine. Let's run this and uh, see if it all works. And yes, it does. It's sorting as expected. All right, so hopefully this assignment wasn't too difficult. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.